evening, everybody. I'm really sorry it's so late today. Um, just various things got in the way, and uh, and I couldn't couldn't get around. I couldn't manage to do it. It's like nearly my bedtime now. All the kids are in bed, so I'm going to have to speak a little bit more quietly today. Nearly my bedtime, which means it's like nearly nine o'clock. You find when you have young kids that your bedtime just becomes like a nine o'clock bedtime because <laughs> uh, you're up in the morning so early um I, i'm knackered as always um but i i could not read today could i because of how exciting it was yesterday uh so alex and z are um alex has just finished his transformation into a black suit the warden was giving him his final test his final test was as Alex discovered, to go into a room and basically kill Z. And, to, and he nearly did it because he couldn't quite remember who Z was because his mind had been so warped. Uh, then he had a memory and he was like, all for one, let's get the hell out of here. And he punched the warden in the face and basically murdered two black suits. And the warden has just pressed a button to set off the siren the alarm and all hell is about to break loose because Alex and Z are in the most dangerous part of the prison and they are basically running for their lives. <clears throat> A distraction. We flew from the room, Z kicking out at the warden's head as we passed like he was taking a penalty. There was a jarring crack and the warden's body flailed into the wall, more of that thick black bile spurting from his lips. Don't you dare get up, Z screamed, his face twisted into an expression of pure hatred. We didn't hang around long enough to see if the warden would take our advice, swinging left into the corridor beyond and bolting towards the door. Where are we going? Z yelled over the siren. I stopped at the end of the passageway, turning the handle and opening the door a fraction. My mind was a mess, my thoughts smashing against each other like boats in a hurricane. The nectar a storm cloud that threatened to plunge everything into darkness. I have no idea, I said, but we have to get out of here. And we did, because when reinforcements arrived there would be no more tests, no more questions, no more torture. The warden would have us killed on the spot. The room ahead was just as it had been when I'd walked through it minutes ago, the only sign of life, the monsters in cages. The weezer that had been cleaning its gloves was now standing, its black eyes watching us suspiciously through the crack in the door. <coughs> I took a deep, ragged breath and charged. The chair the creature had been sitting on was between us, and I picked it up as I ran, swinging it like a baseball bat. It struck the weezer in its back, sinking into the porridge of flesh beneath the coat with a sound like feet being pulled from mud. The creature tumbled across the room, crashing into a cage and lying still. Good shot, said Z, but I could barely hear him because the noise in the room erupted. The creatures in the cages were screaming and barking and growling like it was feeding time, the sound of screeching metal letting me know that some of the bars weren't going to hold. Come on, I said, sprinting down the ward towards the far door. If we could just get out of here, then we might be able to hide somewhere until the coast was clear. But before we'd made it halfway, the door swung open to reveal six hulking shapes packed into the corridor. A dozen blacks, oh sorry, a dozen blazing silver eyes swung around the room before focusing on me. Maybe if I'd kept my cool, if I'd acted like one of them, they might have run right past me. But something in my hunched, defensive stance gave me away. Get him! One of the black suits bellowed, raising his shotgun and letting off a round before he'd even entered the room. I heard the pellets tear through the air, ricocheting off the stone, and I dived for cover behind a cage. Z threw himself to the ground next to me as the space we were standing in was torn to shreds by shotgun fire. What now? I screamed at myself. I could feel the anger swelling up inside me again, feel the nectar urging me to fight. I'd beaten two black suits, but six or more armed with guns? It wasn't going to happen. Something to my side bellowed, the roar dwarfing even the sound of the siren. I ducked instinctively, peering through my raised hands to see that we were right next to Gary's cage. Even in the time since I'd last seen him, he'd grown bigger. And when he rammed his deformed fists against the barred door, I saw one of the hinges 
fly clean off. He lashed out again, leaving knuckle-shaped indents in the metal. I could hear the thump of the black suit's shoes, approaching cautiously the pump of their guns. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Z's fingers dug into my arm and I turned to see him watching with open-mouthed astonishment. That's... Oh, Jesus, Alex, that's, that's Gary, he said. I nodded, risking a peek around the side of the cage to see that the first wave of guards had been joined by several more. I barely got my head back in time before the air exploded into smoke and sparks. Oh, we're screwed, I said, blinking the fire from my eyes. So screwed. Gary was winning his battle with the cage, using his trunk-like legs to pound one of the bolts from its casing. The door rattled alarmingly, his face behind the bars a mask of absolute rage. I saw the nectar still pumping into him from the IV bags, knew that the only thing going through his head was murder. If he got loose, then he'd kill all of us, Z and me and the black suits, without breaking a sweat. Suddenly, I knew what to do. Get ready to run, I said to Z. Head around to the far side of the room, behind those cages. Get to the door. What are you going to do, he asked, shaking his head as if he already knew. Something really, really stupid, I replied. Now go! He didn't hesitate, staying low as he ran close to the walls, keeping the cages between him and the guards for cover. I went to move and found that I couldn't, fear rooting me to the spot. Then, with a choked cry of defiance, I threw myself towards Gary's cage. The creature inside reacted like lightning, angling its gnarled hand down and raking razored claws across my chest. I ignored the pain, reaching out and grabbing hold of the last bolt that secured his cage. I barely had time to slide it open and push myself away before Gary punched the door, snapping the remaining hinge and sending it spinning across the room. The black suits were already firing at me, buckshot like a branding iron as it burned through my flesh. One blast struck me in the leg and I collapsed. It probably saved my life. Gary burst from his cell like a rhino, unleashing another roar that shook the very stone on which I lay. One vast foot smashed down inches from my head, but before he could start on me I heard the black suits firing their weapons, felt a warm rain on my skin as the beast above me was hit. And then he was gone, powering across the room towards his attackers. Alex! Z's urgent cry forced me up, the agony of my shredded leg already fading as the nectar did its job. I ran directly across the room towards him, looking briefly to my side as I did. It was a massacre. The creature that had once been Gary was tearing into the black suits like a kid, playing with dolls. They didn't stand a chance. Their weapons skidding across the floor, their punches useless against Gary's raw fury. In the space of a second or two, the scene was masked by smoke and a crimson mist. Are you crazy? demanded Z. The old Gary was bad enough, but... He didn't get a chance to finish. Something flew over our heads, a black clad lump. I grabbed Z's arm again and ran, ducking around the back of the cages. Every now and then there would be a flash of red through the bars as Gary continued his work, but I focused on the path ahead, looping around the side of the room towards the far wall. We didn't stop when we saw the door, hurtling through it without looking back. There was another ferocious scream, but whether it was directed at us or at one of the suits, we didn't know, and it was soon lost as we slammed the door shut behind us. I grabbed the lock and twisted it, using all my strength to bend the metal around. It would take some effort to open it from the other side, but I was pretty sure Gary wouldn't have any trouble. The corridor was so quiet after the horrors we'd just endured that I thought I'd gone deaf. Then the siren broke through the frantic pulse beat in my ears and I remembered we were a long way from safety. Staggering from the door, I set off down the passageway, Z by my side. We passed one of the storerooms and he pointed inside. What about in there? he asked. I peered in through the door, my eyes dissecting the darkness to reveal a grainy black and white room that was empty and far too small to conceal ourselves in. Hey, it's not big enough, I said. They'll find us in seconds. Come on. I set off again before Z could ask the question I saw in his expression. I can see in the dark, I explained. All the black suits can. It's why our eyes are silver. 
You're not a black suit, Z said over the alarm. I felt his hands on my sleeve, pulling me to a halt and turned to face him. You're not a black suit, he went on. You said our eyes, but you're not one of them, Alex. You're one of us. I nodded, smiling, but I don't know whether I believed him. I mean, I looked like a black suit. I had the nectar in me. How long would it let me remember my old life before the darkness started to creep back in? The sound of cages crashing to the floor behind us broke through the moment, spurring us on. Only one of the storerooms along the corridor was big enough to hide in, but even that wouldn't conceal us for long. There was only one thing to do. We had to go through the infirmary, then out into the network of caves that circled the prison. Surely we could find a safe place there. We reached the end of the passageway, and Z started to open the door. I heard the music first, a different song, but the same haunting tone scratched out from the gramophone. As soon as the door was open, though, the woman's voice was drowned out by the bone-dry squeals of the wheezers. I looked inside to see that most were still in their stalls, although some lurched across the middle of the ward as if trying to find the source of the siren. Keep running and don't stop, I said. Throwing myself forwards, I ran wildly around one weezer, twisting my body out of the way as it raised a gloved hand towards me. I barreled into another, sending it sprawling to the floor. The wheezed screams of its brothers grew more urgent as they staggered from their cells, but they were too slow to stop us. I'll give you something to cry about, I thought, kicking out at the gramophone as I passed it. The woman's voice vanished in a scratch, the record smashing as it struck the stone. The wail of distress that rose up in surround sound shredded my nerves, but before it could reach a crescendo, we had swung open the door and skidded into the corridor beyond. I pulled the door shut, bending the metal lock around the same way I had before, and I was about to head off when I heard Z's breathless retching. He was puking in the corner of the corridor, nothing but a thin trail that looked like gruel dangling from his trembling lips. He gagged once more, then looked up at me through watery eyes. Oh, sorry, he said. I would have waited for a better time, but, you know, once it's on the way, there ain't no stopping it. I put my hand under his armpit and eased him gently up. The siren was even louder out here, and I could hear the stamp of booted feet on stone. But this time I knew what to do. So did Z. The Wookie Gambit, he said with a smile. I didn't have a clue what he was talking about, but somewhere in my head a distant memory was forming. He raised an eyebrow. Christ, Alex, what have they done to your brain? You don't remember Star Wars? I shook my head. But even as I was doing so, more memories bubbled up to the surface. Cut off as the thunder of footsteps grew louder. Z laced his hands behind his back as though he was wearing handcuffs, bowing his head and shuffling forwards. I knew what he was getting at, so I kept my hand firmly on his shoulder and straightened my back. We marched around the corner and took the first right that led up to the infirmary. A group of black suits nearly hit us as they charged out from the plastic curtain. One stopped and lifted his gun, and it was all I could do not to drop to the floor as I stared into the bottomless barrel. But I steeled myself, glaring at him as fiercely as I could, and he quickly lowered it. Where's the warden? he boomed over the siren, glancing at the stains on my shirt where Gary had slashed me, then at Z. And why is he here? Number... I thought back to one of the conversations I'd heard when I was in the infirmary, the number they'd given to Gary. Uh, number 195 is loose. They're trying to contain him. I was told to bring this one back to his bed. Urgh. I shook Z roughly by the collar, hard enough to rattle his teeth, and he glared at me. You'd better go help. It's a mess in there. Several pairs of suspicious silver eyes looked me up and down. I said go! I growled as deeply as I could. The suit in front charged off without another word, the guards like a dark shadow sweeping after him. I didn't wait to see what they'd make of the bent lock on the door, letting go of Z and pushing through the curtain of plastic slats. Piece of cake, he said. Piece of cake, I repeated, and it was a good thing that the infirmary was empty of black suits and wheezes, because we were giggling with relief as we set off across it. A rescue mission. It was Z who remembered Simon. I stopped running when I realised I couldn't hear his footsteps anymore, spinning around to see him peering through the curtains that hid each bed. 
Come on, I hissed, expecting the black suits to burst into the infirmary at any moment, the warden at their head ordering our immediate execution. We've got to find somewhere to hide. Not without Simon and Ozzy, Z replied, ducking behind another screen. Check the other side. I couldn't move. My mind filled with visions of Ozzy's face as he pleaded for my help. His limp body after I'd snatched the life from him. Z emerged again, his face falling when he saw my expression. What? he asked. You know where they are? Yeah, I knew. Ozzy would be in a pile of corpses, ready to go into the incinerator, his eyes staring blindly at the ceiling. Either that, or he was already ashes lining the chimney that led to the surface. Maybe some of those charred specks would make it all the way to the top. Maybe that way he'd be free. Or maybe I was just telling myself that so I feel less guilty about killing him. Alex, if you know where they are, then you've got to tell me. They both risk their lives getting us out. We can't leave them here. I shook myself free from the paralysis that gripped me, running to the other side of the room and looking behind a curtain. The bed was empty, the ancient stains on the mattress like the shadow of its previous occupant. I don't know where Simon is, I replied, but Ozzy is. I think he might be dead. I looked back across the infirmary to gauge Z's reaction, and the moment our eyes met, it was clear that he knew what I was saying. He froze, his mouth dropping open, but he managed to stop himself asking the question I was dreading. Then we have to find Simon and get the hell out of here, he said eventually, pushing his head past another set of curtains, then wrenching it out a split second later. I did the same, seeing a boy with a bandaged face in one cubicle, and a couple of more empty beds after that. It was as I was peeling back the next curtain that I heard Simon's voice. It was faint over the relentless siren, but unmistakably his. Z had obviously heard it too, and we set off down the infirmary together, listening for his call in the quiet valleys where the alarm faded into itself. After a couple of failed attempts, we ripped open a set of curtains to see him strapped to a bed, his silver eyes as wide as the grim that welcomed us. You know, you two really don't get the meaning of subtle, do you? he said, almost laughing. I could hear you yabbering away as soon as you entered the room. We laughed quietly, Z popping his head beyond the curtains to act as lookout while I unfastened Simon's buckles. Although there was an IV drip by his bed, he didn't look like he'd been through any more surgery, his disfigured body and single enormous arm the same as they had been the last time I'd seen him. He struggled to sit up, a worrying series of pops emanating from his muscles as he stretched. I thought the warden had already given up on you, I said, remembering Simon's stories of being dumped. Guess he figured I deserved a second chance, he replied with a shrug. What about Ozzy? Have you found him yet? I let my eyes drop to the floor, my confession ready on my lips. He, he didn't make it, Z said, before I could speak. Suits got him. I'm sorry, Simon. Despite the siren, silence seemed to hang heavy in the room. Simon thumped the bed and I heard the grief choked in his throat. It was almost too much, Ozzy's face once again swimming before mine, his eyes glaring at me. Then I felt Z's hand on my arm and the illusion vanished. He wouldn't want us to mourn him, Z said. He'd want us to get out of here, right? Right, replied Simon, getting unsteadily to his feet. He rested his large arm on my shoulder and we staggered forward like two oversized kids in a three-legged race. Z checked once again to make sure the coast was clear, then vanished in a flash of white. We pounded after him, heading for the plastic curtain at the far end of the room. I could hear more shouts beyond and the barking of dogs, but they seemed distant. We had time. Left or right? Which way? said Simon as we pushed through the cold plastic. Both uh, both Simon and Z turned to look at me, as if by being a black suit I knew a secret way out. I hated to disappoint them. I don't know, I shrugged, my pulse quickening as I heard the growl of dogs drawing closer. I don't know, I say we find somewhere to lie low until we can figure out a plan. The caves, uh, the steeple. Okay, Z and Simon said in unison, right it is. Z took the lead, swinging out the door. With every step I thought we'd smack into the platoon of guards and their dogs, but fortunately the sounds seemed to be coming from behind us, back towards the solitary cells. The storerooms were a blur as we hurtled past them, reaching the T-junction that split off towards the caves. 
I expected the vault door to still be off its hinges, the way the rats had left it the last time they'd broken through. But the closer we got to the end of the passageway, the clearer it became that the way out had been resealed. There wasn't even a door now, just a slab of solid concrete that didn't budge by so much as a millimetre as we thumped into it. No way! Simon groaned, throwing a pathetic punch at the grey wall. They can't do this! But they had. The warden had obviously grown so sick of the rats breaking into the compound that he sealed off the exit to the caverns beyond. We were well and truly at a dead end. Simon threw another punch, but this time he left his knuckles resting against the concrete. Pete's through there, he mumbled, his entire body shaking. He looked up at me like I might have an answer to his unspoken question, but I just lowered my gaze. Pete was a kid, we knew, who hadn't been lucky in the labs. If he was still alive behind there, which was doubtful given the state of his broken body, then there was nothing we could do for him. Simon left his hand on the wall for a moment longer, his lips mouthing some silent goodbye. Then his expression hardened. There's another way out, right? Z was saying, his words broken into pieces by heaving breaths. In the north wing, I remember you talking about it. It's probably being sealed off as well, Simon said, sucking his wounded knuckles. And even if it hasn't, I'm not going back that way, I argued. That's where the warden is. And Gary. Simon looked at me, obviously confused, but there was no time to explain. Instead, we paced back and forth along the corridor, listening to the sounds of the guards and the dogs growing louder, then receding as they turned into the infirmary. It wouldn't be long, though. As soon as the suits managed to rouse the warden, he'd tell them exactly what had happened. Then they'd be back here with murder on their minds. OK, let's think, I said, smashing a palm against my head. We need to find a map or something, a security room, somewhere we can plan an escape. Simon and Z stared back at me, their shoulders hunched and their eyebrows raised as if I'd just said the stupidest thing they'd ever heard. Yeah, sure, snapped Z. Let's find the magic room filled with maps and weapons and escape plans. Maybe a teleporter. Good thinking, Alex. I scowled at him, realising he was right. But then I looked over his shoulder, another memory floating to the surface. The warden being escorted along this very tunnel, taken through a door down the corridor. With it came more distant thoughts, a telephone ringing from the same room, a voice on the other end that struck fear into me even though I couldn't possibly have heard it. The warden's quarters, I said. What? asked Z. Are you crazy? No, they're right there. I pointed down the passageway to a door visible in the wall. Think about it. He must have plans of the prison, stuff like that. Maybe we can find a way out. Right said Simon, turning to look at the door. He might have weapons too. Keys maybe, but... Simon didn't have to add anything. I knew exactly what was worrying him. More memories blossomed in my head like dark flowers. The feeling I'd got the first time I'd walked down this corridor, that I was being watched by something bad. Something evil. Even now the thought of it chilled me to the bone. But nothing, I managed eventually. What choice do we have? Hide in a storeroom until the dogs sniff us out? It's our best bet. It's our only bet. As if they were twisted mirror images of each other, Simon and Z's expressions relaxed, then tightened again. Alex, said Z, a tremor belying the calmness of his tone. That's the first place the warden's going to go when he gets back here. I really don't want to get caught in there. I smiled at him as best I could then ran towards the door, towards the warden's quarters, yelling over my shoulders. Then we'd better be quick. Oh, I'm going to close that because it's so late tonight, but I'll be back, hopefully at the normal time tomorrow. So the next chapter is, uh, is Leia, it's called, which is uh, when we uh, explore the warden's quarters, which is quite a cool place to, to visit and the one after that a plan <laughs> i like it when a plan comes together okay um sorry again about the lateness of today and hopefully the normal schedule will resume it's always difficult when there's little kids so i kind of have to work my schedule around them and uh and obviously my wife so it's just a case of 
kind of getting up here when I can. And I really want to kind of, I want to be able to do it with full gusto and have an uninterrupted time to do it. Um, so I don't want to rush it because I really enjoy this. And this is like my half hour of the day just to enjoy telling a story and enjoy being with you guys. So, um, yeah. Anyway, have a really nice night or morning or daytime or wherever you are, whatever time it is. I'm going to stop talking. I'm so tired. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.